Yesterday was a great day. It was so exciting. And I go back to what happened in Los Angeles, where we succeeded there in changing the law. We did something they said that we couldn't do, that Chuck Mack and through our group working with our coalition of community activists, of environmental activists, of Teamsters and labor organizers, we were able to change a law that had been there forever, that everybody likes, all the big business likes. And we said we have to change what's going on in LA and Long Beach. And the record there is clear. We know that any study of that area showed they had one of the highest cancer rates. They had high emphysema. They had every type of problem you can imagine. Young people, you couldn't even let your kid out certain parts of the day to breathe the bad air. People walking around with surgical masks, that's how bad it is. And yet big business says, I don't see a problem. Well, we saw a problem, and we went out and became active in that community. And we changed the law, and today we are going to have clean trucks, clean air. We won there, and that's the beginning of a great struggle. We have to have a policy that recognizes that we have to change the way we're doing business. And thank God we've got an opportunity to do that this November. You know, global warming is real. And I don't know if George Bush, I see him on television. One day he says, I think it's there, but I'm not sure. Well, guess what? Global warming is real, and we've got to do something about it. And we've got to be part of that wave that changes the way we operate in America because the times they are changing. It's the song. Things are changing. They aren't even like they were 10 years ago. And it's amazing how fast things are going. Another thing I want to talk about is, you know, how people try and exploit the divisions and try and say, well, you know, isn't it incompatible that you have good jobs and, and you want to work on those things? And well, how can you get along with the environmentalists? They don't want us to get along. They don't want us to get along because they realize the power if we work together. And that's why we have to avoid anything that makes, that talks about any type of division amongst us. We've got to get rid of our dependence on, on foreign gasoline, foreign oil, and domestic oil. It's not going to happen. Obviously, the internal combustion engine isn't going anywhere. But we have to start talking about, do we really want to be dependent on that forever? And can't we start lessening those things? Can't we start moving away from the old economy to something new? And the answer is we can. There are so many alternative energy sources that we could be exploring, and we're not. We're turning our back on it. And the big corporations, whether it be General Electric or General Motors or Ford, are saying, you know, they're, they're still doing the big cars. And they say, what happened? How come we can't sell cars? The times are changing, and they're not changing fast enough. And we're the ones that are out there changing. And we've got to make sure that we keep on changing. We've got to be talking about the new energies. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to have oil. We're still going to have to gas up our car. But what about solar energy? What about wind power? What about battery power? What about hydroelectric? You know, these are the powers of the future. And you know, talking to Barack Obama, the vision is we have to encourage working in those areas. And the way you do it is the tax policy. If you say you get a tax benefit if you use this type, or if you put solar panels on your house, or you put windmills up and you do this, you will see people start investing in that. And slowly we can start moving away from this old economy and the old sources of energy to the new sources. It's going to take time, but that's how you do it. You use incentives so people can say, oh, you mean I can actually save money if I use solar power? Well, they'll go out and do it then. It's elementary. But we've had an administration that hasn't pushed those goals. And we've got to make sure that we do that. We've got to make sure that we keep on having a true policy, a comprehensive energy policy. And that's the one thing that George Bush never had. You know, he thinks we can drill our way out of these problems. We can't drill our way out of these problems. You know, it's amazing that even oil man T. Boone Pickens was on television and he says, we can't drill our way out of this. He said, we've got to find alternative ways to get this thing done. And you know, I agree with him. You know, I was on a panel with the CEO of Exxon once. Uh, and I'm telling you, this guy was miserable. I think gasoline at the time was about $2. And he was talking about this seminar, and we were going on and on. I was on the panel with him, and he was saying, I'm damn tired of giving it away. Gasoline at $2. And he got his goal. Through George Bush, he got his goal. $4.50 gasoline, $140 oil. He got what he wanted. And the answer is, now we got to start turning it around. we got to start turning it around, and we can do it. You know, if you let the big oil companies go, 
you know, you saw what George Bush just did. He basically you know, took an, an executive order and got rid of the prohibition against drilling offshore. What a worst idea to go out and be drilling in the Great Lakes or be drilling off of different places that are so beautiful and pristine. Well, that's his idea of drilling his way out of that. If you let the oilmen alone, they would be drilling in Yosemite and they would be drilling in Yellowstone and on the lawn of the White House. That's what they would be doing. I'm telling you, they are dangerous. They are dangerous. And I've seen these people. And I want to announce today that, you know, we're not going to participate any longer in any ANWR coalition. We are out of that and out of it forever. Can you imagine having Barack Obama a community organizer like many of you in the White House? Yeah. Well, how about that for a change? Yeah. That is exciting. He's been out there. He knows about working people. He knows what it is to talk to people that have lost their jobs. He talks about how he worked in Gary in Chicago, about people and talking to people who lost their jobs, who cry in his arms and say, what do I do now? I worked 30 years for this company and my job's gone away. As a labor leader, Tom and I do that. We have the, the tough jobs of talking to people at, you know, Swing Line Stapler, where we lost 2,000 jobs, or, or uh, Mr. Coffee, where we lost 500 good jobs, or Square D, 500 good jobs, or Price Feaster, where we lost 2,000 jobs, moved to Mexico. Talk about those people. Talk about what's their opportunities. And we have to have somebody that believes in a green economy that's going to find a way to put those people to work. We have to find new ways and new jobs in this country. We talk about going out and having solar panels. Isn't part of the policy, if we're going to have a solar panel, let's have it made in America by Americans so we can create some American jobs? If we're talking about having a generator out there to generate power from a river or hydroelectric, why don't we have one that's made in America by Americans? I'm saying we've got to put Americans to work. We have one of the highest unemployments in 30 years. Thousands of people have lost their job, moved to Mexico, job gone to India, gone to China. And people start saying, well, what about these thousands of people that have lost their jobs? Part of the green economy is that we can put them back to work if we integrate the ideas of new energy sources with the idea of putting Americans back to work. Then the same thing's true about our infrastructure. You know, we know that our roads and our sewer systems and our bridges are falling apart all over the country. You know, we can put them to work. We can put people to work rebuilding that if we have that goal. Once and for all, we can turn this country around. And we can start thinking about investing $150 billion in renewable energy. We can start thinking about people driving hybrid cars. We can think about, you know, maybe changing the way we power the trucks going down the highways. Now, this isn't going to happen today. It might be 10, 20 years away. But we've got to start thinking anew. And that new thinking is not being done. And if we keep on this course, we can then say, yes, we can. Let's do it together. Yes, we, yes, can. we can. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.